I'm looking forward to that show. Everyone's just so lovely. But so somehow he's come up trumps again. It always makes it so much better when the sun is out. I don't know which one's which, or my left or right, but it's somewhere around here. Yeah, you can't go down there. <laughs> We're Marion and Chris, and we've been traveling full time since May 2018. We must be insane. Whilst attempting to drive around the world in Trudy, our home on wheels, this happened. All British travellers abroad are advised, advised uh, to return now. As borders closed around us, we decided to wait it out in Turkey until we were able to continue our adventure east. Welcome to Turkey! to reverse off the boat. Oh, there's a motorbike there, isn't there? Very tricky. Can you watch that motorbike? Because I can't actually You're fine. Say. The motorbike, you're clear. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, So we're going to try and find a campsite for the weekend just because of the curfew. It just makes life a little bit easier. Um, so we found one about 20 minutes drive away that we're going to go and check out. So we've just put up to this uh, hotel which apparently has a campsite on the side so Marianne's just popped in to see if they're open because the gates are closed and it looks closed. That is the problem we say it time and time again most places hotels uh, campsites are closed uh, we've been lucky enough to find a few that are open uh, but it is just easier at the weekends with the curfew uh, just waiting because the police they'll probably ask you what you're doing out and about um parked up so it just saves explaining it i just thought i'd try my luck really and i just asked obviously for the curfew purposes we sort of try and get off the main road and i just went in and i said look i know you're closed but could you tell me somewhere for camping and they went come in we'll open the gate for you oh, amazing so, <sighs> there you go he's waiting for you opening the gate oh he's moving the car yeah he's got to move the car how amazing is that's that literally amazing Everyone's just so lovely. But that's the point, isn't it? Just everyone is so lovely. And he said that all the land here is his, so if we need, we can walk around and just stay. Oh. Stay and use all the area. Ah. And he said that you can park anywhere here, so I said we'll park in the sun if that's okay. He was like, you park wherever you need to park. So this is our little spot for the weekend we're just going to hang out here for the weekend the weather is terrible this weekend um, and there's a curfew so it's perfect for us just to catch up on our editing and answering all your comments before we explore this area and head a little bit further south next week it's funny actually before i came to turkey i thought the weather was going to be warm all year round um hey me too <laughs> And it's not. No. They lied. They lied. <laughs> it's uh it does get quite chilly here at night time. Uh the further south we're getting, the warmer it is. Um I mean I'm still in a t-shirt, you know, but it's probably about 16 degrees today, I would guess. It didn't take long for us to get a few furry friends coming to visit, did it? Oh, we got a cat. They're lovely. Now we've got happy cats. <laughs> We're struggling a little bit for power, 
but we've managed to plug in to the building over there they very kindly let us plug in i can't wait to get our power oak battery we've run out of power it's our second day we've really struggled we've been idling the engine um which i know everyone's messaging saying it's bad so uh, we're going the day after tomorrow we're arranging to meet the company that got it shipped over here for us so we're super excited and uh, yeah we'll share that with you it's tuesday morning we had a fab weekend here at this hotel and uh, it's so nice of them to let us uh, stay here for the curfew last weekend we were going to go out filming on monday um, but unfortunately the heavens opened and the weather over the weekend and yesterday was absolutely terrible but the sun today is shining behind us it's come out we've got amazing blue skies so this morning we're going to go and explore the little area around Dacha yeah. uh, which everyone's told us is absolutely amazing so let's go to Dacha thank you very much Wow, what a lovely, lovely family. Amazing. So this is the hotel that looked after us for the weekend, the Palm Bay Beach Hotel. And uh, we want to say a massive thank you to Alkin and the guys here for letting us stay. And uh, another example of true Turkish hospitality. Right, let's go to Dacha. Okay. Look at that view though. If you like hiking and walking whilst you're here, you have to come up. It's amazing. I'm looking forward to having a little look around well, today. When we're static uh, on quarantine weekends working, we need the internet and uh, it's always a concern, but we had a really good one because there's two massive antennas literally just two behind two, the hotel like here. Three roads down. Look at that. Just getting little glimpses of uh, Dacia in the distance at the bottom of these mountains and next to the sea. It's got a beautiful backdrop. Uh, it's a really, really lovely area with the sun shining this morning. Um, for food? Oh, there she goes, there she goes. I love the for. <laughs> Penu is in French, and I know some French. Oh, words. there you go. Hava. Hava soup. Oh, water and air. You got water and air. We haven't checked the uh, tire pressures for a while, so we thought best just uh, give them a check over. The glasses are there, my sweetness. I literally need and glasses. She needs a rope round her neck because she's always losing. I've got two them. pairs. In fact, I've got a couple of spares, but I've got reading, like close up, and then the TV far away. And I literally juggle them all the she time. She does lose them all I the time. Them. Oh, there's a tractor going past. Massey Ferguson. Oh, it's a Massey Ferguson. There you go. So the tyres are all topped up, they were a little bit low, so we've just uh, given them a bit more and uh, right, let's carry on to Dacha. I'm going that way, aren't I? That way. So when we visit these towns that we've never been to, we just kind of pick a point on Google Maps that's somewhere near the seafront and uh, we just try and figure it out as we get there. And uh, sometimes you end up in the most beautiful spot and sometimes you end up in a housing estate or wasteland. <laughs> So today I've just put it in and uh, we'll see where we end up. So the, uh, the town names here in Turkey, they always put the population. So Dacia has 20,800 residents. So we had to stop by the side of the road here because there's this amazing view over Dacia here. That's where we're heading. That looks like uh, the main sort of seafront. So we're gonna be driving around and heading sort of down in that direction. So we found this little parking spot. I think it's probably a pretty good location because 
I can see the coast behind me Ooh. and I can see the blue sea behind me that way which means we haven't got far to go and where there's blue sea there's a seafront and that is normally pretty nice so we're going to go and have a little look around this lovely town. I love it Chris always says I'm not sure where we're going but somehow he's come up trumps again. Look at this place it's lovely we're right by the seafront, the, the coast. This must be a bar in the high season. Yeah. Because there's like loads of tables and benches. But look at that view! Datcha is gorgeous. I think we've, I think we've actually um, arrived on that little peninsula bit that was sticking out that we saw up on the hill. Wow. Um, yeah, very nice. You know when you're a full-time van lifer is when you see a hose pipe and a tap and think, <gasps> I need water. That's the thing I think that's the weirdest is you don't just turn taps on or you don't just flush toilets like normal people. <laughs> you suddenly start to think about all the resources that you're using and how to conserve water <clears throat> and how to like be really, really frugal with all your services, whether it's electric or water or gas. Um, it's a very strange existence. I've noticed a lot of um, van lifers are, are taking a break and going into houses. And um, I think it's something that's really important actually. I was gonna touch on this in another video, but I've started talking now. Um, when we decided to full become full-time travel bloggers, we already decided that we would be in our van or with a backpack visiting every country. So I don't feel like my entire existence is in the van. I feel as though uh, we're gonna shake it up a bit. So I don't know, but I'm thinking we won't get tired of van life because for us, it's like going on a little holiday, um, even if it is for a year or two years or three years. But we know that when we finish this adventure of driving around the world, we're going to be picking our rucksacks up oh, and, yes, going, we are. <laughs> and going backpacking for like six, six to eight months and doing places that um, can't take a van, like little islands, peninsulas and islands, maybe Indonesia and dotting through all the islands, which would be impossible to take Trudy. So um, yeah, resources, really important. I'm liking the look of this. Look at this. So looking this way, they've got this beach area i'm sure that's really busy in the summer and all the way along here they've got electric points so normally i think this must be filled with boats all the way along the seafront here and this area looks like it's probably used for food and there's a pizza restaurant and uh, it's just absolutely lovely <laughs> to the front and I've just noticed all this uh, decking, this metal decking. I'm assuming because it's got ridges that it will be filled with lovely wooden decking so people can sit by the water. But I'm looking underneath, there's so many baby fish. It's just gorgeous. I can completely see why people come here uh, and live and stay here. <laughs> We're just walking out on this little peninsula so you got the water there and the water there and i'm curious to see um the town what's around the corner here oh this is lovely so it goes all the way around we actually slept uh down the coastline where we spent the weekend was sort of on the mainland here so this peninsula goes round and uh, down to marmaris this way it's nice isn't it it always makes it so much better when the sun is out. Yeah, um, So I think we're going to have a little wander along the seafront, see what we find, and uh, see if we can find somewhere to get a little bit of breakfast, lunch, or as I say, blunch. <laughs> and in fact um, had 
the trip carried on, we should be somewhere like Baja, California, uh, Mexico. Uh, we should also have spent five weeks scuba diving in Malaysia. So uh, I've seen these boats and I'm feeling incredibly nostalgic to going back to dive with our friends at Scuba Junkie in Borneo and Malaysia and Indonesia. Seeing these boats, I really want to get some diving in Turkey, um, but obviously with COVID, I'm not even sure what's running. Uh, but we'll look into that as we go down the coast a little bit further. It's funny, we've literally just walked around the corner and it's suddenly gone really windy. Where we were was definitely much more sheltered. The, uh, the boat behind us has actually got a wind turbine uh, on it, which is flying around. I want a wind turbine! <laughs> Can you imagine the power? If we had one of those on each side of Trudy in some of the places we've stayed, I think we would have taken off. Or as you're driving. Some of you have been asking um, how we're getting footage without it sounding really windy. So I'm just going to put this little thing that we got off Amazon. I think the link's on our, sh on our support it's us page. It's just a little, uh, it's just basically a little wind cover that slips over. It's, uh, yeah, just raw and ready. It just slips on. Um, the holes aren't necessarily always in the right place when you get these things. This hour one, the uh, on button's on the wrong side to the, the power button, but it works. So Detcher is a quiet fishing town and is located about 75 kilometers west of Marmaris. And this is where the Aegean and the Mediterranean seas meet. I don't know which one's which, on my left or right, but it's somewhere around here. <laughs> So we're just walking along and we saw this notice board here and it's basically saying that they have a blue flag award for this beach and bay here. And that's a sign that the marine life, everything is clean, well looked after, no pollution, no sewage. That's really nice. Good job, Datcha. Good job, Datcha. How nice is this building here? It's actually a bar. Normally it's be closed now, but uh, normally it would sell racky and fish. We've noticed along this pedestrian walkway on top of these seating areas here, they've got little dove coops at the top. And uh, bird bath. that is a very cool looking bird bath statue. They have a... Oh, look at that. <laughs> Because it looks so delicious! And uh, yeah. this one, uh, do, you want, do you want one of those as well? No, I just Just, just right. one. The breakfast is amazing. This bakery is called Nocta and it was 40 TL for all of that. How delicious is that? I know it's out of season and I know it's Covid time, but these little streets are just lovely. They're cobbled, they've got lovely tiling in the floor, and then, of course, there's beautiful little boutiques, patisseries, um, estate agents, um, and... There's loads of cool shops. Loads of cool shops. Walking around, I always get lost. Chris said that Trudy's just up here, so we've just walked up all those Short stairs. Cut. And I'm right. You're always Trudy's right. Trudy's just there. You're always right. Look. Oh, wow. Yeah, you did it again. We have a joke in the family because I always get lost, hence I drive Chris Navigates, that I have a homing pigeon, but it's dead. But it's dead. <laughs> I think it's a little mean. Look at this, breakfast is sorted. I'm so hungry. What are you doing, love? I'm messaging the power bank guy to ask him if he can print out our fan insurance. Yes, good plan. When we got, uh, when Ursul sorted the insurance out for us, we had no way of printing it. So uh, we're meeting the, the gentleman from the company who's bringing the power bank tomorrow. And how excited are we? Because the last few days we've run out of power so many times. Um, it's been a real battle during the curfew uh, if it's raining and we don't go anywhere. Um, so we're, that's a priority for us tomorrow, which is why our time is cut short here. Yeah, priorities is power. Power. power is priority. Anyway, this breakfast looks lovely. 
Mmm. Okay. Sorry, time to eat. We finished lunch and uh, we're going to start making our way to Akiyaka, which is uh, probably nearly two hours from Dacha. Um, it's past Marmaris because that is where we're meeting um, our contact, um, who is very kindly, his company is the company that we used to um, send the power bank over. So we're going to go, he's driving up from Fessier to Izmir and we'll be passing through that town tomorrow. So if we want it um, before Christmas, we need to get it tomorrow. So I know we want it. So we, we want it. So we're going to Akiaka. Didn't take long for us to take a wrong turn. <laughs> Yeah, it's close. Cool. It's close. Cool. Bye. Bye. I can see windmills, can you see them? I can see them, but oh, yeah. I think it's like a tractor road. Yeah, you can't go down there. You can see the old windmills, but I don't know how to get to them. So we're just driving. Actually, the view of the windmills is better here from the main road. Uh, there's lots of old windmills. And you can see in the distance, there's also lots of new modern wind turbines because this region uh, just outside of Dacia is the uh, windiest part of this peninsula so if you do um, find yourself in Marmaris and uh, you have access to a car a transport or get to do a day trip I would definitely recommend coming down to Jatja it's a, a, a absolutely uh, lovely little town by the sea um, uh, and the whole peninsula looks amazing uh, it's unfortunate that we don't actually have more time on our hands to go and ex explore because there are lots of beaches and little coves and uh, the, the sort of roads turn to dirt tracks further down the peninsula um, and it would have been great to go and explore that area but for us today the power bank uh, is the priority because that we need for uh, the world trip but as we're driving down the turquoise coast I have no doubt there is going to be some lovely beautiful coves oh yeah coastline. we've got a couple of months of lovely blue seas um, we won't get bored of sharing them, that's for sure. <laughs> it makes all the difference having a blue sky though, doesn't it? It, it really does. I it, just feel better. After four days of heavy rain being yeah. in the van working, it yeah. is lovely to get out and about and just move. You know, when it's raining and you're in the van, for those of you with a camper van and you have a week's holiday and it's raining, you know yeah. what it's like. No fun. Um, no fun whatsoever. So we've noticed at the top of this uh, what is it? Akiak. Akiak. What's it called? Akiak. Akiaka. Akiak Vic. Akiaka. Akiaka. Just in case anybody was wondering whether Chris had wings. Yes, he does. <laughs> He's got little butterfly wings. He does today. There you go. We can finally see the windmills. Look, right there. They're literally just behind that shed. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> We hope that you've enjoyed this episode. If you like our content, please consider subscribing and clicking that bell notification so you don't miss a future episode. And make sure you join us next time as we explore the wonderful village of Akiaka.